In this presentation, we will focus on the part 2 of the database system architecture. In the last presentation, we have focused on the part 1. In part 1, we focused on the storage manager and also we have focused on the various data structures used by database management system. In this presentation, we will focus on the transaction manager. In the last presentation, we have seen only the idea of transaction manager. In this presentation, we will see more about the transaction manager and then we will also focus on this part, the query processor. So, let's see the transaction manager first. What do you mean by transaction management? In this chapter, when we had compared about the file system versus database management system, we had seen one important requirement for a database to be satisfied is the atomicity requirement. What do we mean by this? It means all or none property. If you are directly watching this lecture, I request you to watch my previous lecture titled Database Management System versus File System and there I have explained about the various advantages of databases over file systems where I have explained what is atomicity requirement. So, in simple terms, all should be executed or none should be executed and why we are enforcing this requirement? Because this will ensure the consistency to the database. Our databases want to be consistent because transactions are going to be made on the databases. When transactions happen on the database, it should not leave the database to an inconsistent state. I know it will be unclear at this moment because I am using the term transaction here. What is a transaction? No worries, I will explain that shortly. So, for now, just understand when transactions happen on the database, it should not leave the database to an inconsistent state. And that is why we are enforcing all our none property. So, when we enforce all our none property, if a transaction starts, it should complete till the end. Otherwise, none of the statements in the transaction should execute. So, this ensures that the database is consistent. And when we talk about transactions, it should also be durable. What do you mean by durable? Durability means it is the persistence requirement. And we know any system is vulnerable to hardware or software failures. When any failure occurs, I mean whether it is a hardware failure or a software failure, in a nutshell, I will refer it as a system failure. So, when any system failure occurs, let's assume there are some transactions happening on the database. Let's take fund transfer as an example. What do you mean by fund transfer? The fund is going to be transferred from one account to another account. Let's take A and B are the accounts here. The value from A's account should be debited and it should be credited to B's account. Let's assume this is the fund transfer. After the successful execution of the fund transfer transaction, the new values of the balances of accounts A and B must be stored persistently, despite the possibility of the system failure. This persistence requirement is actually referred as durability. So, the transaction should also be durable. So, now we are hearing the term transactions repeatedly. Let's see that what is a transaction. A transaction is one logical function, example fund transfer. And this transaction is a logical function which consists of a collection of operations. And we have taken the example as fund transfer. What are all the various logical operations that it contains? The fund transfer obviously we know it is going to transfer the fund from one account to another. I mean from A's account to B's account for example. In this case, the existing balance from the source that is A's account should be read. Then, how much value we are going to debit to A's account? That should be done. After debiting the value to A's account, the new value should be stored in A's account. Then, the debited value should be credited to B's account. So, the account balance of B's account should be read first and then the new value to be added to B's account. This is the value which is debited to A's account and then the final value should be stored in B's account. So, if you see this fund transfer transaction, a lot of logical operations like reading the existing balance from A, writing the new balance, reading the existing balance from B, writing the new balance to B, all these operations are constituted in a single term as fund transfer transaction. So, this is exactly a transaction. So, it is a logical function which consists of a collection of operations. If you still need more clarity on this, I request you to view my previous lecture Databases versus File System where I have explained with an example. When we talk about transactions, we know this is a collection of operations and when these operations are executed, at the midst of the execution, we may encounter a system failure. 
it can be a hardware failure or a software failure and that is why we are enforcing all our none property when the transaction is started let's assume this transaction is having 1000 lines so when this transaction is started let's assume the transaction is now at the execution of 25th line if there is a system failure at 25th line and we know the transaction cannot complete because it has encountered a failure so we are enforcing the property all are none we know 25 lines are already executed so we don't want the outcome of those 25 lines to be reflected on the database i mean we should ensure the property that none of these 25 lines are executed and our databases should be restored to previous state that existed before to the occurrence of the failure so here the transaction is a failed one but still the values of a and b are preserved and this all are none property provides us consistency if you want some real time examples i request you to watch my previous lecture where i have compared the database systems with the file systems let's continue dealing with the theoretical aspects of transaction management let's say the transaction is failed what's the next step it's the recovery manager comes into picture what is the job of this recovery manager the job of this recovery manager is to ensure these two properties are satisfied i mean the atomicity property and the durability property if there is no hardware failure during the execution of the transaction obviously all transactions will complete successfully so atomicity is achieved but this recovery manager will come into picture only when the transaction encounters a failure so we need to recover from failure so what is failure recovery it is restoring the database to the state that existed before the occurrence of the failure the failure recovery should also detect whether there is a system failure or not it could be a software or a hardware failure let's take the same fund transfer example we know what all the account balance we had for a and b's account so before failure what was the balance for a and b then after there is a failure we need to restore the values of a and b to the previous balance that existed before the occurrence of the failure so failure recovery is very much needed in this scenario and at the same time we know transactions can happen concurrently so databases can be accessed by multiple users at the same time in that case concurrency control manager will take care of the consistency of the databases even when there are concurrent executions the concurrency operation that is carried out on the database is not leading to any inconsistency or any conflicts so this is ensured by concurrency control manager in simple terms there is a transaction manager where this transaction manager takes care of this recovery management aspect as well as the concurrency control manager aspects so transaction manager takes care of recovery manager when there are failures so it deals with the failure recovery and also it takes care that the transactions are happening concurrently without any conflicts so this is about the transactions and let's now focus on the query evaluation engine this query evaluation engine is very important as per as the query processor is concerned so what we have dealt so far we have seen about the transaction manager and we have completed the working of storage manager here now let's focus our attention towards query processor what is this query processor these are all the queries that interact with the database our data are actually stored here and here we have a database software and this database software will respond to database queries and when queries are supplied you see database administrator can supply some queries also sophisticated users or analysts can use some query tools in order to supply queries to the database so these two users normally supply queries directly to the database but what about the application programmers these application programmers are not database administrators so they cannot directly supply query to the database instead they will use the application programs in order to supply queries to the database so these application programs what they write they will actually supply queries to the database and coming to the naive users obviously they will also not supply queries to the database directly so they will use the application interfaces that are generated by the application programmers to interact with the database these application interface will generate the application program object code that is sent to the query evaluation engine we will see about this query evaluation engine now and what about this guy application programmers 
These application programmers write the application programs that needs to be compiled and linked. So this compiler generates the object code and this object code is then interacts with the query evaluation engine. And what about these two guys? The sophisticated users and administrators, I mean the database administrators. The sophisticated users use the query tools in order to generate the DML queries that is supplied to the DML compiler. We know DML queries are used for selecting, updating or inserting or even deleting the data from the databases. So these are data related. But administrator can also use DML queries and that is why there is a link here. And also he uses DDL commands. DDL is directly dealing with the schema of the table. So he is the one who has the complete privilege over the database. Who is the one? The database administrator. Database administrator can create a table, create databases, modify the existing database, add columns, delete columns from the table, anything. That is the DDL. Also he will use DML as well. The data manipulation language, this is data definition language. No worries, when we see the last lecture of this chapter, we will understand the role of database languages. At that time, I will explain you what is DDL and DML. And when DML queries are supplied, DML compiler and organizer takes the DML queries and generates some plans and these plans are executed by the query evaluation engine. No worries, I will explain that now. So we are now here in the query processor part where this query processor part has the DDL interpreter, then the DML compiler and we also should focus on the query evaluation engine. We will see one by one now. What is this DDL interpreter? Let's go to the diagram and see. This DDL interpreter actually interprets the DDL statements that are generated by the database administrator and records the definition to the data dictionary. So because this data dictionary stores the metadata. So what happens? This DDL interpreter interprets all the DDL statements provided by the administrator and records the definition. Where it is going to record the definition? In the data dictionary. And please note, database administrator has the complete privilege over the databases. And coming to this DML compiler, this DML compiler translates the DML statements in the query language into an evaluation plan. So here the output of this will be an evaluation plan. To be precise, the query evaluation plan and these query evaluation plan consist of low level instructions that the query evaluation engine can understand. This query evaluation engine understands only query evaluation plans and this query evaluation plan are actually given by the DML compiler and this query evaluation plan is also generated by the application program's object code. Anyway, this query evaluation plan, whether it is coming from the naive users or from the application programmers or from the database administrators or some sophisticated users, all will be queries and a lot of alternative evaluation plans, which we call as the query evaluation plans are actually generated and the best plan, I mean the best evaluation plan is chosen. So this DML compiler will also do query optimization which means picking the lowest cost evaluation plan from the alternatives. And these query evaluation plans are executed by the query evaluation engine. So query evaluation plan comes from this side or from this side. Anyway, the query evaluation engine will execute this low level instructions, which is actually the query evaluation plan. So various plans are generated and this query evaluation engine will pick the best plan to execute the query. On what basis it will pick the best plan to execute the query? There may be multiple query evaluation plans. All will be giving the same result. But the best plan to be chosen. The DML compiler helps the query evaluation engine in choosing the best evaluation plan, which has the lowest cost. Say for example, from a source to a destination, there may be multiple routes. But which route normally people will follow based on some cost factor, for example. If the cost is lesser from the source to the destination, though there exist multiple path or multiple ways to execute, but still the lower cost is preferred. Likewise, multiple plans are there and query evaluation engine chooses the best plan based on the cost factor. The lower the cost, the higher the chance of that particular query evaluation plan to be selected. And obviously the query will be executed and thus the operation is carried out on the database. Anyway, in the coming lectures, we are going to have a separate chapter called Query Evaluation and Optimization, where we are going to see how query evaluation plans are generated 
and how query evaluation engine picks the best plan to execute. Also, we are going to focus on optimizing the queries. So what we have seen here, the DDL interpreter, the DML compiler and the query evaluation engine. So we have seen the DDL interpreter, the DML compiler and the query evaluation engine. And I hope now you understood the overall architecture of the databases. In other words, it is also referred as the database system structure. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.